Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Tune Kind at 12 FPS. My name is Mira, and I will be playing Sammy Jacks today. But not exactly the Sammy Jacks that all of you really know. And with me is the very wonderful. <laughs> uh, hello, greetings, salutations, etc., etc. Uh, tis I, Whirlwind Gale, aka Gale or Whirl, depends on how you feel. Uh, and I'm going to be playing somebody else who I have also played before, but a different version. So that's fun. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I had this idea really quick, just to, just for a fun flavor to see, um, a d20 to see just how much a certain someone would kind of remember the quote-unquote previous timeline um this was just for shit and giggles and that was a nat 20 <laughs> oh dear so uh apparently sammy jacks uh wakes up uh and he is no longer in his house of paint he is no longer wearing a very different set of clothing uh and he wakes up and it, almost like he woke up from a very interesting dream funny how those work isn't it <laughs> and i feel like he looks around and he's back on the streets of toontown Not a great place to be. Nope. How's he feeling? Just gonna roll. Whiz. Ooh, that was a... Three plus one. <laughs> Not good! Not, Not good! Great. Sun boy ain't doing great. Nope. Uh, he... I'll be real, with that roll, it just... He shuts down. Um, everything that he'd gone through, it's apparently gone. And the numbness comes back. Hmm. His color fades and he's back to being numb. <laughs> There's no coda, no errata, no march. Bevan, everyone he's met. It was all a dream. So the one thing that he can do is get onto his feet and start to walk. And where exactly does he go? He goes out of Toontown because... There's no one attached to him if it was all a dream. There's no one there to keep him there. He always kept moving. The one reason why he stayed in Toontown so long was it was suddenly winter and you don't travel in winter when you're an urchin. You're mm -hmm. stuck there. So yeah, he leaves Toontown behind. Hmm. It seems his feet probably know where to go. They take him on a path that feels familiar, even if, even in dreams, it was a long time ago at this point. Through darkened trees that seem gray and gloomy, where silence hangs in thick, oppressive sheets. There's almost a static that hangs in the air, as through the branches of the trees the sky looks gray instead of dark and dotted with stars. Call it mood lighting, but everything seems just a little more washed out 
than he remembers it. But, of course, he couldn't remember it at all. It was just a dream, right? Yep, just a dream. Do you want me to roll perception? Of course. And the return of his really shitty perception roll. <laughs> Ah, oh, the return of early Sammy. Bless his yep. heart. Yep. So thankfully he does have a plus four, but that was, that was, that was abysmal. That was shitty for him. That's a 14. <laughs> Usually <it> gets higher. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. <sighs> well, I mean, it is high enough. Um... The problem is, he's not quite in the right place yet. But it is a high enough roll that he would notice something. A sort of ruffling of feathers over his head. The sound of something landing on the branches above him. And the feeling of being watched. Just... Okay, better than earlier. Um, a tiny bit of color starts to peek through at the sensation of being watched. A very, very gray, washed out lavender uh, kind of starts to appear on his shading before it slowly fades. Because that was a 13. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of looks up from where he's walking and just kind of can he see the bird that just landed? Yes. That so? Okay. He can. There is a big inky black crow sitting on one of the lower branches looking at him with a beady eye that seems to glow in the moonlight. Um, it seems to be inked in the style of just it almost looks upa and because there are no defining details. It's just a silhouette of a black bird sitting on a tree and staring at him. I'll be real. Sammy just kind of quietly stares back at it for a little bit. Uh, it blinks. <laughs> <laughs> he blinks too, just kind of like, huh, that's a bird. Okay, that's new. <laughs> the bird kind of cocks its head and lets out a low, uh, croaky, raspy cock. I can't make bird sounds. Um, mm -hmm. And then it kind of f dives forward off the branch, almost like it's falling, does a loop around Sammy, and then flies off in a certain direction. I feel like Sammy, like, kind of flinches for a moment because he expected the bird to splat on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the bird didn't. So he doesn't have anything else, so he's gonna follow that bird. Because <laughs> why not, right? Following yep. a strange bird into the woods? Definitely yep. not a way to get murdered. <laughs> 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 All right, roll me survival. Okay. Oh, oh, come back here. Ah, yes. Okay, that was a do 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 team plus four. Twenty-three. Yeah, alright, you have no trouble Sammy has no trouble tracking this thing through the woods. It helps that it's such a dark shape against the otherwise pale and neutral colors of the woods around him. Um, and it leads him down sort of a winding, overgrown path, but as he's going down this path, he finds cobblestones under his feet, overgrown by grass and moss, sure, cracking and falling apart, definitely, but a path of some sort that somebody had put effort into making at one point. Hanging from the trees are old, burnt-out lanterns, several of which have cracked panes of glass in them and are completely out of oil, 
with uh, black scorch marks on the edges of their frames where the fire burned bright one last time before burning out. Sammy kind of pauses to take this in because, oh boy, this is a place someone cared for at one point, and now it's abandoned. But when you're an urchin, you don't look a gift in the eye. It's shelter. So he's going to try and find his way inside. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a while before you even find the building. Um, he follows the path, I assume, now that it's been, you know, made evident. And at some point, you know, he notices that the bird has stopped, like, actively leading him and is just sort of flying overhead. Um, mm -hmm. But the path leads to this old building made of cracked marble in what looks like different looks like it might have been different shades of white but is now just sort of withered away to a sad dusty gray green vines that barely even cross the threshold of being colored wrap up around the pillars and the walls of the building as nature is trying to reclaim it there are two ponds out front of this place that look like they might have once been well tended to, looked like they might once have been home to maybe some ducks, some flowers, but now are just almost dried up and full of algae and just not very well taken care of and definitely smelling of pond water. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the weirdest thing about this place is this strange sensation of deja vu that you get when you look up and see the faded rainbow-colored panels of glass set into the dome of the roof. Sammy blinks at it and I'm just gonna see. Okay. Yep. Definite, uh, definite, uh, color starts to peek out from the white on his skin, and he, uh, it's gray because he's confused. He feels like he's been here before, but that, it was just a dream, right? But, hey, it's shelter. Even <laughs> if it's crumbling, like I said, he's gonna try and find a way in. And I'm gonna roll perception to see if he can actually find. So that is 16. Yeah, it's not a high check. The doors are open. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it looks like the doors have been blown clean off this place. Like, there is an open doorway up this set of low stairs that lead into what he can only assume was once a temple, but the doorway has nothing in it. It's just two pillars with an arch overhead that kind of lead into the rest of this open space, and there's no doors. It looks like there might have been once if the hinges still bolted into the frame or any, you know, anything to go by, but they're gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a definite like blue tinge of curiosity on his shading, but his main concern is getting inside because it's nighttime now and even in his numb state, he's lived on the streets long enough to know, oh hey, you better find shelter, you idiot. <laughs> you know, it's it can be healthy to be scared of the dark sometimes. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, he goes inside. And how to describe inside? It's, well, it's mostly one main room. 
It's mostly one big, round chamber where, even with how dusty and crumbled everything is, his footsteps echo as he crosses through the space. The center of the room is taken up by what once might have been a fountain, with a statue of a beautiful woman made out of black metal with hair of rainbow-colored blown glass, the only vibrant thing about this place. She holds a spear that looks like it might have once sprayed water if the rust around the point of it is anything to go by, and her her dress at the bottom is covered in vines as plants have tried to grow out of the fountain and overgrow the statue. And this isn't the first time he's seen her, is it? Nope, he's seen her in Toontown. In garden that should feel more familiar than he thinks is right. Because <laughs> a very long time ago, he cleaned up that garden. He always liked gardening. And seeing overgrown plants where there shouldn't be still makes him unhappy, <laughs> to say the least. Even in this state. Yep. Uh, and he just kind of falls into that pattern of plucking weeds and trying to kind of put this statue to right uh, more on autopilot than anything else but he does put his hand on the statue for a little bit and just kind of looks up at it and he he speaks for the first time since he woke up you're Alone, aren't you? There's... You had people, didn't you? And there's no answer. But the quiet of the place that had once been loved kind of speaks for itself. The empty benches that once would have been filled with people laughing and talking and going about their business. The prayer rooms whose doors have been stolen and who've had their, their the pools of water that helped with the echoing in their rooms drained. The way that the gemstones have been stolen out of the walls, all of it lends to the idea that, yeah, once this was a place of love. Once this was a place of community, of connection, of friendship, and now, now it's alone. Now it's empty, with nothing but the echoes where the voices used to be. Nothing but the empty silence that seems to lord over the place with a smug victory. Sammy looks up to the statue's face and he's pensive he he should know this person shouldn't he he feels sad through the numbness because I'm keeping that 16 that he rolled earlier <laughs> uh he kind of presses his forehead against the against where where the statues like I, I imagine their her their knee is because mm -hmm. uh, he's six feet but I I am imagining it's kind of on like a upraised yeah it's on a bit of a pedestal and I mean it's an eight foot tall statue <laughs> yeah. And he just kind of goes, we're both alone. 
and hard, isn't it? It's I think I had people. I don't. You shouldn't be alone. And when Sammy says that, there's this odd sensation of his own voice echoing back into his head. You shouldn't be alone. I think there are people who believe in you still, but I don't, I don't know, it's, everything is weird, it, I'm, I'm alone. Feels like I shouldn't be alone. I. This was a dream. It had to be a dream. I don't. Why am I still here if it was just a dream? Why? Why? Sammy kind of just tilts his head. There's nothing in the room, but the thought, the question had come through his head easy as, practically easy as breathing. The presence that had come with it, weak and broken and fragile as it was, had felt familiar in the same way that the thoughts of those people that he left behind in whatever lovely dream he'd been having. It feels the same, but there's something wrong with it. She wasn't like this before. She wasn't like this in the dream. Just gonna roll thirteen plus one, and he kind of there's definite concern as he kind of rubs at his chest a little because ever since he woke up, he's felt almost a little empty. Like he had lost something important. And he just. He. I'm trying to think of what. He kind of. Or. You're important to me. You've always been important to me. I... You're... I'm just gonna... With that net 20 or... Oh, Sammy, that was a net one! You... <laughs> <laughs> Roll with the punches, come on! <laughs> His train of thought that he was going to say just kind of slips out as the numbness comes back. And he swallows thickly and he's just... You've lost so much. Like me. You're like me. You're like me. (laughs) 
And I'm going to say kind of uh, Sammy has kind of started to tidy up again, kind of as he's been talking. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to roll. That is uh, 19. Would you say that would be able to unplug? Yeah, I'd stuff? say that. I'd say that's fine to restore the flow of the fountain water. Mm hmm. And there's sort of a rumbling sound as Sammy pulls the overgrowth from the fountain and sort of casts it off to the side, and water starts to bubble up, filling up the fountain and then spraying from the tip of the spear. And it echoes in the empty space, and across the walls, there are just little flashes of light where there are crystals lingering that people didn't manage to steal, that they didn't know were important. Melody Stone looks so mundane when you don't know what it is, after all. And so it sends shimmers of light skipping across the wall and the patterns of ripples and rainfall. And roll me perception. That is... Plus four, twenty-one. Whoops, I wrote that wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, that's definitely enough to notice. As the sound had intensified, as Sammy had been speaking, as the sound of the falling water had filled the room, it was almost as though the shadows had grown deeper and closer. But it doesn't feel dangerous the way that the the way that darkness pressing in would usually feel dangerous and frightening and threatening, it doesn't feel like that. It just is. It just is that in the corners of the room, in the places the light doesn't touch, darkness starts to congeal and pull together. It gets harder to see in those corners. It, it, it turns black, almost, but it flickers. This darkness that's been growing flickers in and out like a TV with a bad signal. It's struggling. Something wants to be here, but it's struggling. It can't seem to pull together. You can do it. I know you can. You did it before. You're gonna be okay. You can do it. You can come back. You can come back. The shadows pull together a little more, and the shape of a hand sort of forms out of the darkness, flickering between being a hand and being feathers and being just a shape trying to form at all, but there's something to come back for now. There's something that's been calling her. There's someone calling. Someone needs... Someone needs them. Someone needs them. They need to come back. This isn't right. They shouldn't have been gone this long. And that hand forms again from the mess of darkness that's been trying to form a solid shape. And it pulls away from the surface it was sitting on. It pulls away from the walls, from the floors and takes the form of a person, and color fills the room as faded swirls of pastel color come into being, floating almost like a halo around the head of a person much bigger than Sammy, by a long shot, as... He is no longer alone in this room with the statue. There is something here with him, something far 
bigger, far older than he is, and certainly far less human than he remembers, far less like a person. The presence feels tenuous, it feels fragile, and it has the, the general air of an irritated or inflamed wound, as though somebody had cut a hole in reality, and this someone, this something, it was pulled out of that hole by Sammy's voice, by the sound of the water falling, by the idea that it was needed. And Sammy is now looking up into three glowing white eyes, tired with scars of white going down from them, making evidently clear tear tracks, as this creature tilts its head and looks at him and says nothing. Well, I rolled, and that was a 17 plus 1. He's definitely feeling emotions right now as he starts to silently cry. And he reaches out to take her hand, take their hand. And he opens his mouth to try and speak, but now the words aren't coming. It's the swirl of emotions that are still locked down by the numbness, even though he's feeling them right now, it's going to fade. It's going to... If he keeps going on like this, he's eventually going to shatter. Unless something else does first, and the hand he's reaching for gently wraps around him, it's so much bigger than he is that he could practically sit in the palm of this creature and it raise, they raise him up to their forehead and gently bump their forehead against his. And there's the feeling of something shattering. And the numbness is gone. And there's a quiet thought. Thought of, you won't suffer the way I have. I will not let the silence's curse take another of mine. Oh, that was a 4 plus 1 on his whiz save to see if he could actually manage to uh, not sob like a very, very traumatized baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come that on, was this is Sammy. We know what was going to happen. <laughs> that was a 5. <laughs> and... Sound does fill the room. It is at first quiet, a shuddering of breath. Because, ow, damn, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then the tears, big thick and Giblian start streaming down his face and something feels like it's finally slotting back into place where there had been emptiness before and he clings to the hand that's holding him up and he cries harder than he ever did before even when before the numbness before the fire he cries harder than any time before that 
Eight plus years of repressed emotions. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's a hell of a tidal wave. But the hand holding him does not flicker and fade away as much as the rest of this being's body is trying to. As much as the rest of her is starting to try and form shapes that it shouldn't hands becoming a wing becoming wings becoming a cloak this hand holding him upright stays stable the forehead pressed against his stays stable she is here and present and she's supporting him and again not spoken not a sound not that he can hear but a thought that echoes through his mind in a voice hundreds, thousands of years old that's tired and weak but still kind, still supportive, says, tears now, it's okay. The first thing we learn is how to ask for help. Tears are how we do it. You've been hurting for a very long time and you haven't allowed yourself to feel it. You would have found me. You would have found me. But he did find me. He... he had a dream. I had friends. I had a brother. They don't... They're gone. No. They're gone. No. Not gone. Not gone. Not gone just yet. Not gone. You were gone. You were gone. You were gone. But I found you. You found me. Mom. Hello. You helped me again. Always. I'm gonna help you too. You're gonna be okay. Mm. And she kind of hums and there's a feeling almost like someone nuzzling your hair Sammy as she kind of presses closer and says help you first I am old and I have seen many years I am something that cannot be killed you are something fragile and precious my little one you are something that has been broken and needs fixing. Because you should never have been hurt the way you were. Focus on you first. Help you first. Find your friends again. I'm gonna get them back. Of course. Always. You are a very hard creature not to love. You're easy to love too, Mom. <laughs> you... You're good. You know that, right? <laughs> and she hums softly and says, I am neither good nor bad. I simply am. I am the origin. The things where all begin. I am good and evil in equal measure. But I try to be kind. And that is all anyone can ask of me. 
Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But, I mean, well, some people say kind does not equal good. Hmm. Is that what you are? Sometimes, when I need to be. Or is it kind isn't always nice? <laughs> nice is not always good. Mm, I guess. <laughs> um. You're here. I'm here. not gonna let you disappear again. <laughs> I was closer to it this time. I know. I didn't. It wasn't your fault. No. But. But nothing. <laughs> and there's just a gentle bump against Sammy's forehead. Just, nope, no, but nothing. Not your fault. Sammy puffs out his cheeks <laughs> at, at her. <laughs> and he kind of pulls back a little bit to look at Prismatone and... His cheating, for the most part, had been going through a very, very kaleidoscope of different colors. <laughs> as he tried... He was like a disco ball trying to figure out what exactly he was feeling. <laughs> Caramel dancing plays in the background. <laughs> Basically. And he just kind of draws himself up and orange kind of paints along his skin like ink spilled along water and he looks at Prismatone and he looks up at her and says we're going to fix things you're going to be okay I'm going to be okay it's going to be okay because I you're here and I'm here despite everything and they can't take that away from us no no one can And there's sort of a moment of a warm hum in the back of Sammy's mind and just a quiet recognition of my Sammy, my beloved. Uh, uh, there's pink on his shading now alongside orange because he's very determined right now, but he's also like, oh, I love you too, mom. <laughs> <laughs> And he kind of then pauses and tilts his head. He's like, okay, if I woke up in the past to help you, how is the plot going to get me back? <laughs> and she kind of laughs and says, and there's not really an answer in terms of words. But there's sort of a feeling, a familial recognition, a memory of a woman with honey blonde hair and skin with that's coated in a thin layer of film grain, and then the quiet notion that, I don't know, that's more my sister's place than mine. We'll figure it out. 
<laughs> and Sammy just kind of gently pats. Sammy just kind of gently pats the hand he's resting in. Just and just kind of snuggles down because this is his mom. She is a little broken, but still good. <laughs> yes. They're both broken, but still good. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of pulls him closer, and he's wrapped up in what feels like a blanket of thick, heavy feathers. And it's not exactly cold or warm, it's comfortable. And there's the feeling of being safe, even as the dark of Prismatone's cloak blots out the light from the moon that's fading through the cracks in the ceiling. And there is just the very clear notion that he is loved. And she's loved back. So how does the plot get Sammy back where he's supposed to be? <laughs> well, he does know a time traveler! <laughs> I was not expecting the dice to give me a nat 20. Yeah, neither was I. I wasn't even expecting you to roll that dice, but... I, it, was, it was a split second of, oh hey, wouldn't this be funny? And then I rolled the dice and uh, I guess we're uh, gonna have to do a little detour plot. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh goodness I mean I don't have any problem with that I mean I was just gonna say do you want to say that he wakes up back where he was but things are a little different but if you want to do a whole time travel thing that's your business it's probably gonna be something we're gonna have to figure out off recording <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious <sighs> but yeah yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, yep, that, that's gonna be a thing, because it, <laughs> any other role, any other role, I would have said, yeah, we'll wake up, it was, like, things are slightly different, he's back in his bed again, everything's fine, but that was a nat 20. That was a nat 20. You just went through a reboot and then got a nat 20 on remembering what happened. Congratulations, your brain's fucked. Yep. Yep. Just... Yeah. So, that's a thing we're gonna have to figure out. <laughs> I love D&D! &D. <laughs> Yay, D&D! &D. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I believe we could probably end it there. <laughs> yep, I think that's a good place to end. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Yep, thank you. <laughs> and have a lovely day. Goodbye! Bye!